Have you ever felt overwhelmed? I could ask for a show of hands, but that'd be silly because this is a podcast. And really, I don't need to because if you are a human, you have had a season of life where you have felt overwhelmed. And I think it gets particularly harder as we grow our families and fill our schedules. The more people that we are connected with and taking care of and responsible for, the easier it is to start to feel overwhelmed. And I am in one of those seasons, my friends, we have had several weeks of just, I mean, physical stress and emotional stress and just feeling overwhelmed. But these weeks are even within a several month time span of just a lot going on. And so I've been thinking a lot about overwhelm and the mess and the chaos of life, how to deal with that. I am not going to say I'm doing it all perfectly. Even the tips I'm going to share today, they're helpful. I am finding them helpful. I've seen them be helpful for other people, but they're not a magic bullet to suddenly get rid of the overwhelm. I'll just be honest about that up front. But since we all go through these seasons, I wanted to take some time this week on the podcast to dive into practical tips about how to make it through. And not just make it through by the skin of our teeth, but to make it through purposefully and intentionally to live by grace, to to still see success in our family life, even when things are not going to according to plan and we're feeling totally stressed out and totally overwhelmed. So I'm excited about this conversation. I am not at all promising to have all of the answers, but I will promise that these tips are things I am actively trying to live out right now in my overwhelming season of life. And I know they may not solve every problem, but they can be really, really helpful. So my friends, let's dive in. Welcome to the Love Your People Well podcast where we help women grow godly relationships, grateful hearts, and grace-filled lives. I'm Jess, and I'm a marriage and family therapist, a Christian, a wife, a mom, and I believe that God creates us for relationships, relationship with Him and with each other. So if you're looking to love God well, to love yourself, your family, and those around you well, you're in the right place. Stick around, friend, and let's get started. So I realize that today... I will probably share a lot of examples of these overwhelming seasons of life and how these tips that we're going to talk about are helpful. A lot of these examples are going to be from my own life. If you checked out my quick little bonus episode yesterday, then you heard my big news, my friends, that we are pregnant. We are 21 weeks pregnant. We're having a little boy this August. We are super excited, but I'm sure you can imagine how having triplet toddlers being pregnant. I'm also nannying right now just for this spring semester of school for a friend's five-month-old daughter. Like we've got a lot going on. My husband recently has been out of town. We have a family member dealing with cancer right now. I mean, a huge, just all, all the things. Oh my gosh. And first of all, please be praying. Pray for our little boy to be healthy. There are some possible complications that they are keeping their eye on. Really, all we can do right now is pray and wait and see what happens. Um, Pray for my family member with cancer. I mean, there's so much going on. So just, you know, it's always good to ask for prayer. And I do trust that prayer is powerful. So join with me in prayer. But also know that a lot of that is in the background as I'm sharing these tips with you today. So yes, I will give my usual disclaimer. I am a therapist, a licensed therapist in the state of South Carolina, And I help a lot of people deal with overwhelm and all those crazy seasons of life. But this podcast, of course, is not therapy. None of this is is personal or professional advice directly to you. And there are links in the podcast description for some earlier episodes I've done about mental health and how to get connected with a great counselor. So you might find that helpful if you are currently in a season of overwhelm and thinking counseling might be helpful for you. So there is a ton going on. And you may not be in that season right now of feeling overwhelmed. I hope that you're not. But we all know you've been there before and you will be there again. It is simply a part of life. So it really comes down to how do we deal with it? And I want to start our conversation today before we really dive into these practical tips. I want to clarify what I mean by success in this season of life. 
I do believe we can be successful as moms, no matter how busy or chaotic life is. I do believe we can be successful as wives and as as women, as Christ followers. We can have success, but it's not necessarily going to look, it's certainly not going to look like what the world might de- might define as success. It might not even look like what we typically would feel like is successful for us in our family life. But when I talk about success during an overwhelming, stressful season of life, I'm talking about maintaining strong relationships. That includes with God and with yourself. I mean, yeah, we're going to get stressed (laughs) during these seasons, but not getting lost in that, not wallowing in that, not getting kind of stuck in that spiral of despair and maintaining strong relationships with our people. And we all know that can be really difficult when there's a high level of stress and chaos and overwhelm going on. And so, so I just wanted to put that out there. That's what I talk about. I'm talking about what I'm thinking about when I talk about success, because we can live by grace and we can, you know, we may not eliminate the stress, but we can replace it. We can surround it with success, even in these totally crazy seasons of life. So I have nine tips, very practical tips that we're going to talk through today. Before I dive into those, though, I mean, you know, I like to give you the resources. I want to make sure that, yes, this podcast is helpful, but that you also have some other tools in your back pocket. So I'm going to have links in the podcast description, um, but also you can always find all the notes and other links, other episodes, things like that in the show notes, which will be loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 073, because this is episode 73. But I would encourage you, if you are in an overwhelming season of life, you may find it helpful to check out our free five-day email course called The Five Tools Every Busy Mom Needs to Move Her Family from Autopilot to Intimacy. That is a free course giving you a super simple, straightforward, practical tip every day for five days, five tools. Um, There's a quick video and a one page worksheet and just a little blurb of encouragement every day to give you some tools to move your family from being maybe stuck in a rut, being a little discouraged, a little distant back into a reconnected, close, intimate relationship. So that's a free resource we have for you. Um, again, you can find that online at the Love Your People Well website. And we also have a line of devotionals tackling different topics that are really common issues in family life. So there's some about anger. There's some about communication, about finding our identity in Christ. So again, if you're in an overwhelming season of life, it may be really helpful to just intentionally focus on whatever specific area is really creating overwhelm, creating stress for you and to dive into God's word around that topic. So again, you can find those devotionals on the website, on the links um, right here in the podcast description. Those are two resources that I know will be helpful for you if you are in one of these seasons of feeling a little bit stressed, a little bit overwhelmed. And if you're in that season, you are not alone because I am in that season feeling super overwhelmed. But okay, let's dive in to some practical tips. These are all things I am trying to do right now as I'm pregnant and dealing with all the things, emotional, emotional issues, you know, cancer, it's no fun, worrying about your kid, not to mention the physical tiredness of the day. Anyway, I'm not here to complain. I'm just letting you know, all of these tips are things I am actively currently trying to do in my life. Number one, is to simplify. When you are in a season of overwhelm, simplify as much as you can. So I'm talking about things like chores and food, like the meals that you're planning and preparing for your family. Simplify the extracurriculars and the stuff that's on your schedule. Simplify what you expect to get done every day. And of course, different people go through a season of overwhelm with different things going on. If you're working full time outside of the house, your ways of simplifying are going to look different than mine as a stay-at-home mom with my kids. But for me right now, what does this look like simplifying my life? This is not easy for me because I really like to be, I'm like a list person. You know, I like to have my to-do list and check things off and feel productive. And in this season of life, when it's really chaotic and really difficult, 
I have chosen to have only one daily item that's on my to-do list. Now, yes, there are still the things that are what I would consider like the absolutely must-do list. I have to feed my family every day. I have to make sure we all have clean underwear every day. Now, it might not be folded. You might have to dig through the dryer to get to it, but it is available. And beyond the, I mean, that's, those are really the two things. Do we have a dish to eat on and food on it and clothes to wear? That's pretty much it when it comes to taking care of the family as far as absolutely must get done. And with the triplets, even those things can take the whole day (laughs) because they're fussy or they get sick or, you know, different things are going on. And, And the reality is, even though I have simplified and I have one item on the to-do list, other than these like it has to happen things, that one thing doesn't always get done. Last week, my one item was fold the laundry. And that item stayed on the list for three days (laughs) until I finally had to just buckle down and spend an hour and a half one evening, thankfully on the phone with a friend, folding laundry. I mean, we've all been there before. And I know it would be faster if I could fold it every day because we basically do a load of laundry every day with everything going on and all the messes that children tend to make. But there's not really an easy or convenient place in my house to fold the laundry. Like there's reasons, blah, blah, blah. We always have excuses. That one to-do list item stayed on the to-do list for three days before it got done. But whether it's chores or meals, just simplifying what you are trying to serve your family, whether it's saying no to some things that might usually fill up your schedule. If you are in a season of stress and overwhelm, you need to simplify. You need to lower those expectations. It's not for forever, but it can make it a lot more manageable to get through the day and get through the week when it's a more realistic um, expectation about what is going to get done. Tip number two is to manage your stress. Now, I am not saying we can eliminate our stress during these type of seasons when there's just so much going on, but we can manage it. We need to, first of all, know ourselves. Can you even tell when you are getting stressed? You might be surprised how often in the counseling room I sit down with people and it's very obvious to me that they are stressed out. And usually by that point, they've realized it, but they've been stressed and overwhelmed for a long time and didn't really know it. They had all these other things they thought were the problem. And sometimes we just need to know what are my personal individual warning signs that send a signal to me, ooh, I'm stressed out. I'm not doing so well. I need to handle this or else it's only going to escalate. And there are some common warning signs that we can look out for. A lot of people start to have trouble sleeping when they're stressed out. A lot of people experience physical symptoms like more headaches or more stomach aches. They just don't quite physically feel right when they're really overwhelmed, they're really stressed. But often there are more personal and individual things that you can also notice. And I will put out there one of mine. I have noticed recently... (laughs) And one of the ways I know, oh yeah, I really am in a season of being totally stressed out is that I'm cursing more. I mean, I'm not, I'm not cursing at people, but cursing and my language is something I, I really struggled with early on as a young Christian in college. The Lord really worked just miracles, I would say, in changing my perspective about language, as well as, of course, the practical, like, how do I speak to other people, to myself, And so I notice this, you know, if I stub my toe and I'm not in a season of stress, you know, I can handle that. I'm going to say, oh man, or ouch or whatever. And if I'm in a season of stress, those are going to be little asterisks or whatever. If you're reading it written out, I'm, I'm not handling my language as well. And that is a warning sign for me personally that says, hey, Jessica, um, you're getting stressed. Like you have gone beyond what is easily manageable and you need to simplify and do some of these other things that we're going to talk about through the rest of our conversation today. So figure out for yourself, what are those warning signs that tell you my stress level is kind of above and beyond and figure out for yourself what actually calms you down, preferably things that calm you down in the moment. When you stub your toe and instead of saying, ouch, you start cursing or 
not start cursing. It's not like a five minute spiel, but you know, that curse word is coming out or that, that phrase or that tone or something is coming out, whatever your warning sign is, what can you do in that moment to calm down? And again, for myself, I'm happy to share examples from my own current season of craziness. When I notice that for myself, I am pausing and praying. Now, sometimes I'll pray out loud. um, But really, I mean, this hasn't been something I've seen come out in my interactions with other people. It's more just like I get frustrated because somebody dropped a cup or I stubbed my toe or, (laughs) or, you know, I haven't folded the laundry in three days, like little things for myself that I'll notice either internally or just kind of under my breath. There's that little uh, language slip, I'll call it. And so in that moment, pausing and praying, confessing it, like that really quick confession is helpful for me because it kind of reminds me to redirect what I'm focusing on and how I'm handling the moment. And one thing that helps all of us when we talk about managing our stress, we need to know ourselves, even know when we're stressed, we need to be able to calm ourselves down. But for all of us, it's also really helpful during these seasons to have a way of releasing physical energy, because that is a big part of why when we're stressed out, we yell or we cry or we hit things or we throw things or we slam doors or we curse is because it gives that little bit of physical release. Physically, we're using our muscles, we're releasing energy, and that releases some endorphins and it feels good. And so make sure even when life is overwhelming, you might not have time to go to the gym or go on your daily run or do maybe some of those normal exercise things, but find ways to release physical energy that are safe and something that you can do in the middle of a crazy day. One thing that I like to do, uh, well, in other seasons of life, I've done jumping jacks. (laughs) Like, let me just pause and do 10 jumping jacks. Um, right now because I actually did stub my toe the other day. And so I've got a bit of a foot injury um, and I'm pregnant and I'm tired. (laughs) I'm not releasing energy in that way. Um, But something that I find helpful is getting a washcloth, getting it wet, you know, run it under the sink, get it wet and twisting it as hard as I can. Nobody's going to get hurt with that. My kids might think I'm silly, but you know, they're two. (laughs) They think everything's silly, but it really does release some of that physical energy. Super random little tip, but as you're thinking about how can I manage my stress when I'm overwhelmed, make sure there is some way of releasing physical energy that you are controlling. You're deciding to release that energy rather than it just bursting out when something happens and you can't manage that emotional reaction. Tip number three, during these overwhelming seasons of life, we need to lean on Jesus And I hope you're leaning on him all the time. But I know for myself, these are seasons when I can't, it's probably a little strong to say can't. I'll just say I I, I don't. Like realistically, I don't get my usual quiet devotional time. I don't spend as much time sitting at my desk, reading the Bible, praying, taking notes, like all the things I like to do, which already are cut back because life is busy, are even less during these type of seasons. And so this is a time when we need to have tiny prayers and maybe tiny readings, but we need to have more, again, realistic expectations about how we are going to engage with God and with his word and lean on him. So I find it really helpful. I'm still reading scripture, but not necessarily as much at the same like one chunk of time. But placing scripture verses around the house, like writing them out and sticking them on the bathroom mirror or on the fridge, um, praying them out loud, reading them out loud when I need to calm down or I need that little quick mental refreshment and being honest and vulnerable. I have asked you here in our podcast community to be praying for my family as we have some concerns with, um, with my little one and family member with cancer, like we need to be real with people and ask them to step up into prayer because prayer is powerful. But it also really helps. And again, this might just be more of a personal or personality thing, but leaning on Jesus in these seasons to cry out to him, writing out prayers or questions or struggles, you know, writing that out journaling style can be really helpful 
crying, literally crying tears to the Lord, um, yelling at him. If you've got some stuff you need to work out, he can handle all the emotions that come with an overwhelming season of life, and he does not get overwhelmed. And so whatever that looks like for you, just getting it out and turning it over to the Lord is going to be really helpful and important during these seasons. Because if we can be more realistic about how we approach that and raw and vulnerable with the Lord and with our people, then we're less likely to just totally shut down from the Lord, to just stop reading scripture or stop praying because we're overwhelmed. We might need to cut back or change how we do it, but we need to actually lean into the Lord rather than shutting ourselves off from him. Tip number four, during these seasons, we really need to prioritize the most basic of needs. So I'm talking about eat some food, my friend. When you are stressed and you have zero time, you need to eat food and you need to get some sleep and you need to take a shower and brush your teeth and comb your hair. And at least once in a while, you need to wear real pants. Like we need to not just take these things for granted, which is sometimes easy to do when we're not, you know, we're busy, but we're not really overwhelmed or, or feeling totally chaotic. We might look around our living room and be thinking, oh my gosh, it's a tornado in here and I can't handle it. That, that stresses a lot of people out to see the clutter or to see the mess. But don't get so caught up in all that stuff that you forget about the basics. And I really would emphasize getting sleep and eating food. Um, maybe because for me personally, <laughs> those things are really easy to start skipping over when I'm feeling stressed out and I'm taking care of, you know, a thousand other things. But hangry is a real thing. You get <laughs> hungry, you get angry. That happens for a lot of people. It happens for me. And sleep is something when we're totally crazy in these seasons of life, it can be really tempting to just spend our evenings, like if we finally get some downtime, to just be scrolling our phone or watching TV or just kind of get lost in something mindless, rather than just turning it off and going to bed at 730, if you can, which of course, most of us cannot on a regular basis, but getting that extra sleep, let your kids play in, in a, you know, safety approved playroom while you take a nap on the couch, like do what you need to do to eat food and get sleep and actually take care of your own basic needs. And one thing that I would include in that is to make sure throughout these crazy days that you are pausing and taking deep breaths. Now we could talk a long time about the power of a deep breath. There's a lot of science in that and just physiologically how it helps and impacts you. But when we're stressed, we tend to be running on empty, we're go, 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 everything is fast. And even our breathing, even our physical bodies can start to really kind of take those shallow, short breaths, which do not refresh us in the best ways. And so pausing and taking a long, slow, deep breath, even while you're in the middle of folding laundry or disciplining your kid or driving to the next activity can be really helpful. All right, tip number five, during these overwhelming seasons of life, now this is a tip really, we need to do it all the time, but it's going to look different when we're feeling totally overwhelmed. Take your thoughts captive to Christ. And there are two specific ways that I see this playing out for myself when I'm feeling really overwhelmed. One is to recognize and be intentional about what I want versus what I can realistically have. So an example of that, again, just for myself, <laughs> we were excited to be pregnant. Um, you know, we've been trying to get pregnant, oh my gosh, for forever, but you know, every adoption, the we've tried it several times this past year, and we've had a few miscarriages. And so when we got pregnant, there was a lot of anxiety about that, which I really did not expect, but some anxiety around you know, the health of the baby and how is this going to go and not to mention, can we handle this <laughs> and all those thought thoughts, but, but taking those thoughts captive to recognize with the Lord, there are things that I want here. I, I would like a large family. I want a healthy baby. I want an easy pregnancy. You know, we all want 
a lot of the same stuff when it comes to getting pregnant and having kids versus what can I control? What can I have? Actually letting Christ take the lead in these things that I want and the things that I'm experiencing. And that really helped manage some of that anxiety early on in the pregnancy to give it to the Lord and acknowledge these are the things I want. These are the things I'm worried about. These are the things I'm praying for. But what I can actually control is, you know, what food am I eating? Do I sit down and put my feet up when I need to? You know, am I praying for my child? All these sorts of things. Taking these thoughts captive to Christ is particularly helpful because when we're feeling overwhelmed and stressed, they tend to run out of control or jump to conclusions a lot more quickly. And so recognizing that and laying that before the Lord is really helpful. And then the second piece that I, again, personally, I have found very helpful as far as taking my thoughts captive to Christ in these crazy, messy seasons of life is to make the decision for gratitude and rejoicing and not just letting that be led by my feelings. And I think, I mean, I think this is something we always should do, but when life is feeling pretty smooth and pretty easy, maybe it's busy and chaotic, but it's kind of an under control busy, then I feel more naturally grateful and happy. And so when things are overwhelming and that feeling might not naturally be there, It is still a decision that we get to make, and I would say we need to make, to focus on gratitude and choose to rejoice, maybe not in, you know, the cancer diagnosis or the things that are stressing us out, but choose to rejoice in the Lord, in his strength, in his faithfulness. You know, we could go down a whole list of his characteristics, rejoicing in the Lord, in who he is, in what he has done all of that is a decision and we have to be more intentional about it when we're feeling really overwhelmed. Okay, tip number six, focus on discipleship over discipline with your kids. This is a season, my friends, for grace in a big way. And part of this, I mean, at least for me, part of it is recognizing that when I'm stressed, when I'm overwhelmed, you know, my temper is a little bit shorter. It's easier to get frustrated with my kids. And I realized, thankfully, pretty early on, I am at risk of over disciplining my kids during this season. You know, these little things that push my buttons, I'm more likely to overreact and then discipline them and focus, you know, and and maybe turn that corner toward behavior management rather than discipleship and character building. And so I have found for myself making that intentional shift that when things push my buttons, I'm going to try to focus on how can I disciple my kid in this moment? How can I build character and emphasize our family values rather than necessarily correcting the behavior or disciplining the child? And, you know, my kids are toddlers. This is going to look different depending on the ages of your kids. And I'm not saying that there's no discipline during this season of life, but I am saying we just like we need grace from the Lord and we need it even even more abundance when we're overwhelmed. We need to extend an overabundance of that grace to our kids, recognizing our own weaknesses to, you know, potentially like I'm experiencing that temptation or maybe just likelihood to over discipline over manage and control things because I think that I can or my temper is short um, to recognize our own weaknesses and choose to focus in a different direction but also we need to recognize if we are overwhelmed in whatever season of life we're in our kids are probably feeling at least some of that if not all of that kids are very intuitive They really feed off the family emotions. And so if mama is stressed out, our kids are going to be stressed out. And if you're overwhelmed, they're more likely to feel overwhelmed, which might mean more behavior issues. It might mean more necessity for discipline, but also that means more opportunity for discipleship and character building and loving on your kids, showing grace to your kids in part because you know they're struggling. 
tip number seven during these seasons of life, it's really helpful to still try to stick with some sort of family rhythm. Now that might be routines, that might be habits, but the more that everyone can be on the same page about knowing what to expect, when to expect it, why is it happening, that can really help get through these seasons of overwhelm because it just removes some of the question marks which tend to come with at least a tiny level of stress. If we don't know what to expect, we're kind of on edge a little bit more, um, especially our kids. And so having that family rhythm or some predictable routines can be really helpful to just eliminate what you can of some stress, eliminate that tiny little piece of stress to help everyone get through the day more smoothly. So for myself and my family in this season of overwhelm, we have really focused on our breakfast and dinner routines. Not only when are they happening, um, because we have dinner kind of early with the toddlers so that we can get to bed on time, even if they're crazy and they're totally losing it, we're not getting, you know, really pushed back into the evening. But our breakfast routine and our dinner routines are really helpful for grounding our days And that helps the kids, but it also really helps me that I know, you know, at at 7 a.m. we're eating breakfast, at 5 p.m. we're eating dinner. Now, does that get pushed back? Of course it does. Do we always have our morning devotions during these seasons when my husband has to go to work early and, you know, different things are happening? No, sometimes that falls by the wayside. But having that rhythm means that those times when it is out of the ordinary, The next day, you can just pick right back up where you normally leave off because everyone knows what to expect, why it's happening, when it's happening. So we have found personally that that breakfast and dinner rhythm is really helpful. Um, But you may find, you know, during the day, do you do things in a certain order? Are there like certain times of the day or activities where you really connect with your kids or with your husband? Um, Finding those daily rhythms can be really helpful for for not just surviving an overwhelming season, but actually feeling like you're getting stuff done and you're connecting and your days are purposeful. So we have two more tips that I want to hit on before we can recap all of this. Tip number eight is to take this overwhelming season of life and make it a testimony. We need to share our struggles and our successes with the people around us. We all need that. And I know here on the podcast, I try to be very intentional personally about sharing some of my story. Um, And I don't know what that looks like in your life. You know, if you don't have a podcast, you still have people who you can share your story with. I have experienced this so many times over the years that when I have been honest with someone about a struggle that I'm dealing with, maybe it's current or maybe it's in the past and you know, how I'm dealing with it, how the Lord is showing up in it. That is so encouraging for other people. I mean, infertility, that's probably a good example. Um, I know I talked about that a lot in episode two, when I shared some of my personal story of, of coming to the Lord and meeting my husband and having kids. And but as I was dealing with that, I tried to be very intentional about being open with people. I mean, I wasn't just offering it as like my, hi, it's nice to meet you. By the way, I can't have kids conversation starter. But as I got to know people and we talk about family life, I was, tr- I was trying to be intentional about not hiding it, about just letting it be a part of my story because it is a part of my story. And there are still to this day, women at church getting pregnant and coming and saying how helpful it has been because they have also struggled with infertility and to know I'm not alone. You know, I got to see how you walked through this and how the Lord was faithful to you. And that's been so helpful. I didn't know that. I mean, sometimes I know that, but not all the time. And, and even right now sharing about being pregnant and having some potential complications and having some anxiety early on in the pregnancy. All of those are things that I know other women struggle with. Now that might be you, or it might be your friend, or you may have never dealt with any of those issues. But there is something that we can connect over. And the Lord is using all of our difficult and overwhelming seasons to testify to his goodness and his grace. So I don't know what your season looks like, but I know that the Lord will use it 
I know he's already using it, but he's going to continue to use it. And I know that he will bless and honor you as you share that with other people, as you are real and vulnerable with other people, because it helps them. It helps all of us to know we're not alone. We can all get through these seasons, not because of our own strength, but because we all serve and follow the same God. And let's close it out with tip number nine. When you are in these seasons of life, my friend, you need to ask for help. And frankly, this is probably the, mm, I don't know, the hardest one for me. It's a hard one for me in this season of life, um, in part because I've gotten so used to like having my mom around and she's very helpful and we've got our daily routine But all of that is different right now. She hasn't been around as much because she's got other things going on in her life. And and our daily routines have looked different since I got pregnant and we're nannying for this little one. And, And so I have needed to realize that things are changing and it's not always as manageable as it was during earlier seasons. And figuring out how to ask for help and who to ask for help, that is not always easy. But it is super important. I actually, this very weekend, this very past weekend, my husband reached out to his parents to ask them, hey, could you guys come this weekend to visit? Um, Because we're, we need some help, basically, is what he said. The kids have been sick, and I've been super stressed out, and my husband thought he was getting sick. Thankfully, I I think it was only allergies. But he, he reached out to say, mom, can you come? Can you rearrange your schedule so you can be here for... I mean, they weren't even here that long. It was like a day and a half, but it was helpful. And even just knowing we have people we can reach out to and they will try to help us is really meaningful because we don't want to fall into the trap when we're totally overwhelmed of thinking we're all alone and we have to somehow figure out how to manage all of it. That is not only not realistic a lot of the times in these stressful seasons, but it is not God's intention for us. He wants us to lean on each other. He wants us to ask for help. He wants us to offer help. And so if you are not the one in the overwhelming season of life and you're listening to this podcast just maybe for tips for the future or for encouragement, well, that's awesome. Think about who you know that is in an overwhelming season of life. They might not have told you. They might not have verbalized it. But we are all smart people. We can look at what's going on in people's lives and realize they might be kind of stressed out right now. And okay, maybe you're wrong and you make them dinner and they're not stressed out. Is there a loser in that situation? No, there's not. There is a family who got blessed by a meal and there is you who got blessed by making a meal and helping. So whether you are on the side of needing to ask for help or you're on the side of needing to offer help and try to figure out ways to bless and benefit your friends or your church members, All of that honors God and it helps our entire community. So friends, that, those are my nine tips for getting through these seasons of overwhelm. Let me back up and just recap these nine tips. Number one, when you're feeling totally overwhelmed, everything is cranky, everything is messy, simplify your life, simplify your chores and your food and your schedule and just remove as much as you can from what you're trying to manage. Number two, manage your stress. Figure out when am I getting stressed? What's my warning sign? How will I calm down? And how can I release physical energy in a safe and intentional way? Tip number three, lean on Jesus. Keep him at the front of everything you're doing, whether that's crying or yelling or praying or reading, whatever it is, lean on him. Number four was to prioritize your most basic needs, food and sleep and hygiene, all the basics. Make sure you're not just taking them for granted. You're not skipping over them. You're actually prioritizing them. Number five, take those stressed out thoughts and take them captive to Christ. Choose to be grateful and to rejoice in the Lord. Number six was to focus on discipleship over discipline during this season of life for your kids. Number seven, try to stick with or maybe figure out a family rhythm day by day, day by day, so that everyone knows what to expect, when it's going to happen, why it's happening. Now you will get off from that rhythm, 
but that's why it's a rhythm. It's not a rule. You get right back to it the next day because it starts to feel really normal and lowers that stress level for everyone. Tip number eight, make this season a testimony, share it with other people, be honest, be real, ask for prayer, ask for encouragement. And number nine, ask for help. Ask for the things that you need to make it through this season. So my friend, I hope you're not in a super overwhelming season of life. But if you are, you're not alone because I am. And you know what? It's not going to last forever. And I'm confident I will get through it. And I will love my family through it. And I will have the success that I talked about at the beginning of maintaining strong relationships. Not because these nine tips are magic or anything like that, or even that they always work and help. But because I am trying (laughs) to just lay myself, my family and this season at the feet of the Lord. He is the one who will fight the battle. He is not surprised by anything going on that makes us feel overwhelmed. And he already knows how it's going to get resolved, how it's all going to work out. And he's in it before and during and after. So turn to him, my friend. Make sure to grab some of those resources that I mentioned earlier on. Our devotionals on different topics are at loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash devotionals. And the free five-day email course about the five tools every busy mom needs to move her family from autopilot to intimacy, that free course, you can find that online at loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash tools, the five tools every busy mom needs. Um, And of course, you can get all the show notes at loveyourpeoplewell.com forward slash 073, because this might be an episode where it's really helpful to share it with a friend. And you can share the actual episode, um, you know, in your podcast player, there's like those three little dots at the top, copy the link, send it in a text to a friend. But you can also send the website if they're maybe more of a blog person, or they can listen to it on the website. Um, For some people, that's, that's easier. So the show notes are available to help with that. So make sure, my friend, that you're just taking it one step at a time. Overwhelming seasons come, but they also go. And so praise God for that. We will be back on Friday with our Friday Faith Follow-Up. And until then, my friend, hugs and blessings to you. I'll talk to you soon. Hey friend, before you go, if this episode was helpful or encouraging for you, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a written review. It not only encourages me, it helps other women connect with this community. And you know what else? You have a chance right now to love your friends well. Copy the link to this episode and send it in a text to someone who you know needs to hear today's conversation. Or just take a screenshot, post it in your Instagram stories, and tag me at loveyourpeoplewell.com.